Hey Ricky, how's it going? I heard that your grandpa enrolled here. He's like a student now? Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a real stressful time. Honestly, it's been a little bit of a hell ever since he enrolled here. Um, he's done a lot of really crazy things. Like he's uh, he's super slow. He goes like one mile an hour all the time and it's just horrible to walk with him. The other thing he does is he like kind of kills my vibe, kind of. Uh, it's really not a people person, and uh, he's not much of a person in general, honestly. Ricky. Yeah. Is this low sodium? I don't. I don't know, Grandpa. Ricky. Hmm. Does this have gluten in it? I. I don't know. I don't know, Grandpa. Does I really it don't. Does I don't know. It... Ricky, is it good for my heart, though? Is it? Grandpa, nobody knows what's in the food. We don't know what's in the food. Just eat your food. Ricky, does this have calcium? Grandpa, please stop asking what's in the food. No one knows what's in the food. Eat your goddamn food. And then also on top of all that stuff, he doesn't know how to talk to us. It's like we're on a completely different level. It's like we're a different species to him. Help! I've fallen and I can't turn up! Grandpa, what major were you here anyway? Major? No, no, I was the captain, son. Thanks for playing war, it really helps out a lot. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, war! You don't know what war is! I have your grandmother's cookies here, Ricky. Go ahead, get them. Yes. Damn it. Thanks so much for joining us. Grandpa, what do you think about the president of Russia? Oh, oh, Reagan's doing a fine job. It says here there's an Americans with Disabilities Act now. It says they have extra time on tests. Is being really old a disability? No. But but sometimes I forget my granddaughter's name. I'm not your granddaughter, Grandpa. Guys can have long hair now. Exactly, Sticky. Song talks about two different forms of proof. The first one is called inartistic proof. Called what? What was that? Inartistic proof. Inartistic what? Proof. What? Ricky. Talk I'm, to him. I'm so sorry. What is, what is he? The other is Aristotle's who? Never have I ever twerked. Grandpa, you've twerked before? Of course, Ricky. I twerked in the army for 45 years, right in the foxholes. I have an excellent twerk ethic. Ricky, stop. Ricky, Grandpa, stop. No, Ricky. For number seven, though. For, for number what? seven. What? What? Uh, for number seven, did you put that we tied in Korea? This is biology, Grandpa. Oh, okay. I remember when I was 150. Hi everyone, welcome to Segments, my name is Lawrence Cobb, I'll be your host, and our first segment today is Con Queso, the band. So, uh, could you guys all give me your names? <laughs> my name is Tyler Acosta. I'm Kevin Meltzer. I'm Jeremy Amano. I'm Ren Piper. Yeah. And what kind of music do you guys make? That's a good question. Um, I suppose you could call it like kind of like an alt pop thing, although we've drawn some fire in the past. So like, how do you have alt and pop together? But yeah, the idea is to play stuff that's like not super, not super like cliche, but people still know it and can like jump and mosh. okay. So, <laughs> so do you like a lot of covers, or is it just music that's similar to other? Or? Right now we have a lot of covers, but we're working on a lot of original stuff too. Okay, so <laughs> if you guys could kind of choose, would you like to go into a lot of original music? What's your vision for your band? We would definitely guys? like to start transitioning more into making our own songs and playing them at shows and eventually have full performances where it's just our songs and maybe a few covers here and there, but it would be uh, great to get into the studio pretty soon. I know you guys are called Con Queso. Could you explain your name? Oh boy. A little bit. Oh boy. <laughs> the story kind of... Kind of seems to change over time. <laughs> I, I think the most recent iteration was uh, collision or some sort of uh, face-off between a Mongolian and Mexican food truck that eventually ended up fusing their trucks together. 
<laughs> and you guys were all the workers of these trucks. Uh, ben and Diva make music. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we, exactly. I drove the... Yes. Did you hear that? We're getting attacked. Um, <laughs> I, I, was the owner, I was the owner of the Mexican food truck, and he was the owner of the Mongolian food truck, food truck and... Yes. These were our employees. And then we invented the queso bowl, and it's just like a bowl of shit. We invented cheese. the queso bowl. <laughs> Oh, one of you guys make music, is it usually one of you guys comes up with an idea and you have like, hey, I have this part of a song, where can we go with this, or how does... Exactly, it's very, uh... You kind of saw part of it just now, <laughs> we were... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to need that recording, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin just kind of like did a thing, and I just started doing a thing on the drums, and then... We just stacked it like, all up. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> does that already exist? And he was like, no, and I was like, well, it exists now. And like Tyler said before, we use like a lot of software on our phones. I use mainly GarageBand just because like, I can't afford anything else. Uh, for it, but um, I've come up with a few demos here and there. He's made a few, and these two better start. <laughs> Do you guys have any events coming up where you're going to be showing off Green Lava? Um, we're actually, so this was, we're pretty much five shows in five weeks this semester, and we're finally happy to like, have some time to focus on writing. Um, we're looking at possibly some festival in December, um, and we, next semester we want to put on like our own, like, debut like variety headliner show um, renting out one of the local venues so there we will definitely be playing that pretty cool and is there anything else you guys just want people to know about you look for uh, new music coming soon and uh, expect great things world tour 2018 it's coming yeah, 20, yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, book us please <laughs> <laughs> yes. thank you guys alright and now we have con queso with stomp <laughs> Get excited, because in October, we're celebrating 150. 150. 150. 150. 150.
We will be celebrating 150 years of our educational institution. Celebrate with us homecoming week, October 9th through the 14th, 2017. We cannot wait to celebrate our 150th anniversary with Truman students, administrators, faculty, staff, alumni, and the Kirksville community. So mark your calendars and go Bulldogs! Hi everyone, my name is Babak Ecknerwall and this is my friend Reb Reb Notlock. Howdy. Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence Cobb and this is my friend Colton Barber. Colton, can I ask you a few questions? Can I ask you one first? That, I didn't notice something was messed up there. What? I, the nope. Name? What do you, oh, okay. nope, yeah, don't know sure, what you, uh, cool. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, I want to be a children's librarian. A children's librarian? Yeah. Do they have like whole libraries just of children? That seems ineffective. <laughs> and what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, uh, I want to be like a financial analyst slash advisor when I grow up, I guess. Riveting. So there are rumors going around that streaking may soon not be allowed on campus. What do you think about nudity suddenly being banned? I think that's ridiculous. I didn't know it was a thing that we were allowed to do. Now I am going to protest for it not to be banned. <laughs> And what do you think about rumors that nudity may soon be banned on Truman's campus? Not a fan of that. I really like to advocate for the nudity on campus. I think it's something that we should all be able to do. Free the nip. Gosh. Free the nip. But what do you think about the Westboro Baptist Church coming to protest Spike the Gay Bulldog? Spike the Gay Bulldog? Oh my gosh. I'm very taken aback. I'm not pleased with this. <laughs> and what would you say you're more concerned about this month? Uh, rent coming up in a couple weeks, or the inevitable heat death of the universe? Certainly rent. Probably rent. My hours got cut. Uh, so what do you think about people being misrepresented in interviews? I think it's lovely. I think that the public needs to know what people aren't. So what do you think about North Korea's recent missile launch over Japan? Uh, honestly, I haven't been following it, but <laughs> based on you telling me that, that's not good. That's not good. That's no. correct. And what do you think about interviewers misrepresenting what people say about political issues on camera? Uh, I feel like it's cruel and I don't think it should be allowed. Gotcha. But, uh, unrelated note, could you look into the camera and say, that sounds awesome? That sounds awesome. Thanks, dude. What do you think about people being misrepresented by interviewers on camera? Uh, great. Alright, and uh, why do you want to work for this company? What? And uh, why do you want to work for this company? Um, benefits? Well, I have we'll a heart condition. Oh, sorry. Damn, I thought you were done with benefits. What up, camera? How are you doing? No, I'm just being real. We've got Lauren Gieskin with us, and we're going to be interviewing her about her semester at sea. Could you give us just kind of a brief description of what you were doing out there? So, semester at sea is a three and a half month program where we take classes at sea. And my voyage, we went through Asia, hit India, and then up Africa, we ended in Europe. And while at sea, we took college level classes. So we had professors everywhere from Yale. We had my Vietnam War professor was actually a Harvard professor at the time of the Vietnam War. So we had these really wow. cool staff members teaching their subjects and really imparting their knowledge and their experiences throughout the world with students as we youngins got to go around and really witness the world for most of us for a lot for a lot of us for the first time and you mentioned you had like a vietnam war class mm -hmm. where they all similarly focused on an area that you were going to go through or near or? so we had one class that was called global studies that the whole ship was a part of and that prepared us for the next port so that gave us the cultural the historical the social background of where we were going which okay. was very cool to be able to walk in and say oh, you know, I saw this temple in class, we read about it here, and this is what it means. Because it gave us a lot of context, made us really appreciate where we were. But we had students who were hotel and business management, different things like that. So they had their own specific business classes or econ classes. So there was even a dance class on the ship. So everyone, regardless of their major, could actually take part in it. So I wanted to make sure that no matter what area of study, they could get students from all over to experience this. On the ship, every time we would take a break from classes, like all of our weekends, we'd be in a new country. And so now it's like our weekends here, it's, okay, what are you gonna do? Like, we're gonna go to Walmart, and we're gonna hang out. But at the same time, it's great to have routine. That's one thing that I really missed, was the routine of it all, because 
we would have lethargic days on the ship where you'd sleep all the time. We had external hard drives that we would pass around all the time. So everyone had like all the seasons of Game of Thrones and all the Disney movies and we'd just watch movie after movie on the ship. And then we'd get into country and it'd be 20 hour days, constantly just go, go, go. So there was never just that normal routine. So being back in Kirk, I'm like, okay, like I know what I'm doing on Mondays and not A days or B days or in country. So how did you get into photography? So I got into photography when I was actually started to shoot my brother's basketball games when I was younger. And my mom would just hand me the camera at first. I would kind of like moan. But then when I really took it as a challenge to get him the best shot and to see his face light up, and I realized that could be applied to nature. It could be applied to places I go and people and unique experiences. I really that really latched on. So my uncle sadly passed away a few years ago, but he was an amazing photographer. And my aunt knew that we both shared this passion. So she graciously made one of his cameras available to me. And so I actually took a picture of him around the world with me as I was able to take his camera and his memory on this trip of a lifetime. Because I know that if he was here, that we'd be comparing photos and he'd be asking me what setting I had it on and critiquing my work along the way. So it was just a very unique experience to be able to kind of share his legacy almost with my journey as I traveled around. When we were in China and Japan, it definitely had that Asian culture, but when we were in, we were in three countries in Africa, so from South Africa to Ghana to Morocco. And in South Africa, you learn about the apartheid. It kind of felt like a Southern California vibe too. It had big malls, it was really pretty. You went to Ghana, it had that traditional tribal African vibe. I went to Morocco and it was an Islamic country and it was, just phenomenal. I was sitting in the m massive plaza they have there, listening to the call of prayer, staring at the market, and it was just incredible to be in a country that I've never really learned, like, never really witnessed before. So it was a completely different experience for me there. I know I've heard at least from many people, the world travelers, that they feel like they were changed by their experience. Do you feel that way? And if so, what's yeah. changed? So because I'm a history and a sociology double major, it's one thing to read and to study these places out of a textbook, to watch videos, but to set foot in these cultures that have such different values and family systems and governments and dynamics than yours, that's when it hit home to me. Because I came back to the United States and my mom asked me a question and I was able to reflect upon my stance before the trip and then after the trip. And especially it hit me with American poverty was one of the biggest things. And just realizing that while we still have a lot of work to do here, the sheer resources that are available compared to the children selling me magnets at the um, Taj Mahal in India. And our guide said, like, if you have a little bit of extra, like, you can give them, but just know that they're most likely part of a bigger organization sends these kids out and provides shelter for them. But it's just they're street kids. And so to see that these kids weren't in school, it was midday on a Wednesday, and you just think, like, shouldn't you be in the classroom learning? And they weren't. And it was just kind of eye-opening for me. Did you change at all in your perception of just people as a whole, now that you've seen people in so many different contexts, so many different religions, communities? Um, I definitely have a more individualistic base. Before it was just people as a whole are this, but now it's you really have to learn the background and the story of the people. And so that's the main thing that my journey is like, I want to know their story and what made them who they are today. And so it's definitely made me give people second and third chances and kind of like let them open up to me and get to know me more because that is really like, you don't know a person's story until then. I got proposed to in Ghana. They said that was very common though, and that it was very interesting. Um, he was like, I'll marry you. I'll show you my village. I said, I'm okay. I'm going to stay here. It was his village. He was chief. I said, I respectfully decline. Is there anything else you'd want to tell people? Someone you met or something you did that you just want to share? A really cool semester at sea tradition is when we cross the equator for the first time um, on a naval ship, it is you have this ceremony where you go from polywogs to shellback. It's like you rite of passage. This dates back hundreds of years. And so most of the time in the Navy, the sailors would shave their heads. Well, on the ship, um, all of, most of the men shave their heads and I actually shaved the back of my head. And so it was this whole big crazy day where you had, um, you got 
dumped, like with green goo, you jumped across the pool, you got out, you kissed King Poseidon's ring, which was actually our captain dressed up. And then it was just a day of festivities to kind of say like, we've made this voyage. So now like my hair's going back like that. It's in a really weird layer, but my, my roommate and I both did it and just kind of like, we'll check in every once in a while. She's in California. So it's like, hey, how's the hair coming along? So what's your, your next stop then? Going out to meet more people, where do you want to be when you do that? Um, hopefully for spring break, might be going to Iceland. Oh. And then after that, hopefully Germany. Um, I've been to 21 countries so far, hit 21, 24 hours after my 21st birthday. And so we're going to continue at least one per year for as long as I can. Because I think that the more countries I see, the more countries I experience, the more I learn and the more as a future teacher I can impart to my students and the more values for my future family. And just for me as a person, I can really take away and learn at every step. So, here at Segments, sometimes we like to take a minute out of our day and really connect to the general populace. Not just the high performers that we interview, but the people that watch us at home as well. Let's go around and get their opinions on Segments. And what would you say is your favorite part about the TV show? Like, what was your favorite segment? Honestly, probably the middle. I think it was uh, a little bit unexpected. I think that guy was lying about knowing who we were. Hmm. Summer, if you were to say your favorite bit of all of segments, like the entire TV show, everything you've seen, I know you're a big fan. What do you think has been your favorite interview that we've done so far? As in like, I have not watched any of the interviews, so I feel a little guilty. No, like your favorite interview that we've done. What do you think is the, the most popular one? Oh, I don't watch TV. <laughs> like you've seen segments though, right? On TV? And what do you think is your favorite part about the TV show? Like what was your favorite interview? I have no clue what you're talking about. I think we're being too specific. People don't want to pick one best part of our show. What is your favorite thing on TMN TV? Which show do you think is the best? Uh, I haven't actually watched anything, <laughs> so uh, no comment. <laughs> so you haven't seen a show called, I don't know, Segments? Have you seen? I have not. So what would you say is your favorite program on TMN TV? Of all the TV shows on TMN? I haven't seen any of them. So could you tell me, what's your favorite TV show on TMN TV? On TMN, what's TMN TV? I'm gonna have to find a new tactic. So, uh, if I were to describe a geometric object where it's uh, two points connected by a horizontal dash, what, what would you call that, sir? A line. A line, a line what? A line. Sir, if you could tell me, what would you call a geometric object? Uh, two points connected by kind of a dash. Two points connected by kind of a dash? A secant line? Like a secant. Uh, what would you call a geometric object that's two points connected discreetly by kind of a dash? It would be a line what? A line segment. Hey, nice! Just like I said, folks, trying to connect to the general populace, because uh, everyone loves segments. So we're back here with Colton Barber, and we're going to talk about poi, a hobby of his. So, Colton, could you give us kind of a brief overview? What is poi? Uh, basically, you take two balls, put them on string, and you spin them around. It's a really elaborate hobby. Okay, it sounds kind of like yo-yos, but way cooler. Is that right? um, in essence, yeah. Okay, so how did you get started yourself in poi? What made you want to do this? So I went to a uh, gathering of friends, and uh, one of these people that I'd never met before had uh, two balls on strings that were lit up, and he was uh, basically tracing really cool patterns um, in the night sky. And I was like, that is miraculous, and I want to do it. So why do you poi? What makes you want to do it? It's creative. Um, it's an outlet. It allows me to um, int introspectively look at my day and also just escape in a way. Um, it's a flow art, so in terms of like uh, psychology, there's this guy who talks about uh, states of flow and how they are the optimal experience from which you can really, I don't know, catharsis is a way to put it, I guess, uh, and this is positive. Could you describe more kind of what flow feels like to you whenever you're yeah. actually kind of in the zone there? 
Um, I'd say in uh, terms of this guy, Nikki Evers, it's one mind dancing. Um, so basically you, your mindset is, uh, so when you're dancing to a song, um, you basically just feel it, right? You don't necessarily want to do um, any particular movement for any reason. You're just in the, in the groove, in the moment, and that's kind of how flow is. It's when your poi essentially feel like an extension of your body and you're able to move them in creative ways to express whatever it is that you're feeling. So do you see this as something you do for yourself? Is it like performative to other people or how would you classify a poi? Um, I, do, I do it for both aspects. Um, but for instance, a lot of people do it as a performance art. Um, so you'll see people spinning them on fire and spinning them uh, with LED poi, which are basically like what I saw. So they go at night and um, all sorts of really cool patterns come to uh, mind. And uh, I would love to personally be able to perform it at a venue, but most often it's just I'm around friends and uh, for some reason have the itch to spin some balls around. Uh, how would you recommend someone get started in play if they were interested? So I recommend going to, through your closet and finding old athletic socks. And then uh, if you have two tennis balls, get those. Uh, put them in the bottom. But you, what you want to do is make a cut. So when you inevitably hit yourself, it won't hurt as much. And then just start spinning them. That's all you can do. So would you mind showing us a little bit? Tell us about poi. Yeah, certainly. So when you start spinning poi, the first big realization that you have is that in essence you have three basic movements from which you can vary. You have the one in front of you, that's horizontal plane. You have the one to the side of you, which is like wheel plane. And then you have the one behind you. Now from there, you can naturally suppose that there are movements in between the two. And if you move your body, you will also have another added layer or element. So for instance, if you do one up here, you can, oh, I don't know. There are a lot of different ways that you can approach it. And right now I'm not really in the flow side. I'm more in the technical side. So the analytic, but let's see if we can do some actual flow. Is a handsome face right there. Oh, hey. Yeah, so thank you guys for coming with us and watching segments. Uh, please follow us in segments on Facebook, and then also we have our YouTube videos on TMN Television. We're going to have more episodes for you. Our next host over here is going to... Hmm. Hmm. We're going to have a host. It's definitely going to happen. We're going to find someone, I promise. Uh, we're not sad and alone. There will be more episodes. <laughs>
Hato Dagu. Um.